Some ass, huh? <laughs> <laughs> okay, okay. okay. What, what kind of uh, issues does Washington kind of pose right now? Well, they're a really good running team, first and foremost. I mean, they, I think they do a lot of window dressing, a lot of shifts, a lot of motions, and... Um, you know, that, that's the challenging part of it, just to get lined up and, you know, be on our responsibilities there. The passing game, very efficient, done very well the last three games. Um, really impressed with the quarterback. Obviously, 17, McLaren is, uh, you know, he's got really good speed. Um, you know, deep developing routes. They do a good job of really stressing in level two and level three, and they'll dump it down and take what they can get. You know, they, they play very patiently. Uh, I think they're executing pretty well right now, you know, as far as complementary football, you know, with that run and the pass game. You guys did a better job, I guess, to run uh, against the Cowboys uh, coming off the Bengals game. Anything that you guys changed up? Or no, I, you know, a lot of the same things there, but... Um, you know, I thought we had more penetration. You know, I think, you know, the get off with the defensive line helps some. But, uh, you know, I think we're just playing more consistent. You know, that was a we, – we figured Dallas was going to come in and really try to establish the run. And so that was a big emphasis. Not that it's not emphasized in other weeks, but, uh, you know, that, that's a good, you know, sign moving forward. But now this week it's a, it's a big, real big challenge. Gus, was that your off your defense's best all around performance on the year? I thought we played, you know, the first three quarters pretty well, but the fourth quarter, disappointed in that. You know, we had some busts show up. We gave up three explosive plays just on, you know, not staying on top. You know, some of the principles we teach over and over again. Uh, you know, they got us in some big plays and they got some momentum after the kickoff return. So that part. You know, uh, but up until then, you know, I thought we were on it for the most part, playing our principles real well. Um, you know, they're they're explosive team. Dallas was. Thus, in this win streak that Washington's on, it's some may say at the start of it, it was they kind of became sneaky good. Yeah. Is it good to catch them now, or are they still sort of an un you know what uh, unknown? That I, I think that's it. I give them credit. You know, they went through some adversity right away, and they just stayed the course, and and they had some injuries, but they you can see that they're just getting better and better each week. And that's really the key for all teams this time of the year. Can you continually get better? And it feels like they're hitting their stride. They kind of have an idea of what their team is and their offense is and how it's going to work. And, uh, you know, they're, they're just working really well together right now. So, yeah, I don't know if they're, they're sneaky anymore, you know. You talked about Casey Hayward and how instinctual he is. Uh, as somebody that's been around him for a few years now, um, is that something that just is just natural with him or is it something that kind of goes into – So, the, I'm sorry, the first part was – Instinctual, Casey. Instinctual, Casey. yeah, very instinctual. I think that uh, he, he brings I, – I mentioned before that he really brings a sense of poise to the DB group. There's some young guys back there kind of learning the ropes a little bit. But I think with him on the field, you can see him communicating after every play, talking to guys, you know, some alerts and things like that. So, and his instincts, you know, the, the way we he's played and, the, you know, how we position him, I think is trying to best utilize his skill set. And, uh, you know, that he's always been that. And I think that's what we appreciate the most is his, his instincts. Washington's had a, a lot of time-consuming drives here in the last few weeks. I think Monday night had 40 minutes uh, time of possession. How concerning is that to get your defense off the field? It's, it's real big. Uh, you know, usually that doesn't work well. If, they're, if they have it for 40 minutes or in the 30s, you know, it's you, we want to get our uh, offense the ball as many opportunities. I mentioned before the, you know, the, the nine series or 10 series, we need to find a way to get more. And, um, you know, whether it's takeaways or three and outs, you know, to get them more opportunities. So time of possession is going to be a big factor in this game. I think third down. I think third down is going to be real important. They, they do such a good job of being in third and three, third and four, you know, in those situations because of the run game and the, and the pass game. So, you know, we need to, you know, find a way to, you know, do really well on first and second down. Coach, the pass defense has been pretty well with, you know, getting sacks and getting to the quarterback. However, one statistic that kind of is a little low is the interceptions. What do you think can be kind of preached amongst the guys to kind of ramp up interceptions? and be Well, good? earlier in the year, we, we felt like we had opportunities. We just didn't capture those opportunities. You know, now you're seeing it is not as many opportunities as come up to make. So, you know, I think some of that is affecting the quarterback, working hand in hand and tighter coverage and those opportunities. Uh, you know, quarterbacks, we're seeing a lot more quick game. 
that, that's the big thing I think that we've seen the last couple of weeks is just all the quick game that we're seeing, even out of the shotgun. So, you know, that's something that we've addressed it with our guys. And, you know, I know Dallas threw a lot of quick game and, and teams prior to that. So, you know, whether that's with the rush, you know, the way of adjusting, but, uh, you know, we need to, you know, be able to let those guys hunt a little bit. And that's why I said first and second down is real important. That was back in, in training camp. Uh, both Unique and, and Max said they were going to be the, the best pass rushing duo in the NFL. A lot of people just kind of looked at it and said, okay, whatever. But when you look at any metric, they're one and two in, pr- in pressuring the quarterback this year. How much better can they be? Can they get? Uh, they're, they're both playing at a high level. I know, you know, um, Max is sacks. You know, he hasn't gotten but effect. You know, we look at it differently, just the impact or the effect he has on the quarterback. And he is playing at an extremely, extremely high level right now. So it's like takeaways. We say they come in bunches. Just keep doing what you're doing and keep working and they'll come. But both those guys are doing a good job. And I think, you know, we look at, you know, if we're not affecting the quarterback, you know, the quick game, we really rely on those guys. And, um, you know, they're, they're both just playing at a high level. Two more, Adam, and then Willie. Coach, uh, Coach Passaccia has talked about one of the things he stresses is don't get too high on wins, don't get too low. You guys did have a three-game losing streak. Have you noticed, like, a different bounce in the step, a different confidence from the guys? And, and how important is it just to see that what you're doing is working, get that win, get that result? Yeah, I, I think that was big. I mean, to, to come off of it, their spirit's been really good. I've been impressed. I thought last week during the walkthrough, that's a challenging week, but their attention to detail was really on it, and you, you sense that from them. And I think that's carried over to this week, you know, so – uh, you know, they are. I think they all understand there's, there's streaks that take place. You lose two, you win two. You know, it's a long season, and it's important that, you know, we give them the big picture where we're at, but at the same time, you know, we, we've got to find ways to get better and correct some of these things that we've had errors on. And some of them, a lot of these big plays, not so much last week, I think there were two out of the big plays in passing were bus. You know, we're just – you. you you know, where it was one side's playing one coverage and another's playing another, you know, and things that – those are the things that we've got to clean up. And that's gotten better from the beginning, but uh, it's got to get cleaned up even more as we continue in December. Gus, back, back to Max a little bit, and without getting yourself in trouble or anything, but no. how, how do you keep him focused when it's obvious there's a lot of holding and things like that going on with him, but uh, it's not being called? And, and when will he get over that hump of – of getting that better respect from officials to, to uh to get those holding calls and just to keep him focused. And- right. I, I think he's got the respect of them, talking to the officials, and, you know, I think they're well aware of his style of play. So, um, you know, I think Max is such a – boy, he's really strong-minded. And uh, But this is a challenge, right, a rusher. We've gone through it now with some guys that are really, really good rushers, and they go a couple games without a sack. And it's that challenge to not let that consume them. You know, and with him, it isn't. You know, I think because he can see it on tape. He's playing hard. You know, we're pointing it out, your effort, the way you attack the quarterback. I mean, a couple of them, he was inches away from getting the ball out on the quarterback. And it's, you know, when you see that kind of effort and that desire, it it will come. His opportunities will come. All right, guys. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Thank you very much. Coordinator Greg Olson to the podium. Questions? Thank you, Will. Coach, uh, I appreciate that. Coach, uh, yesterday I talked to Derek about kind of his lean league and passing yards between the 20s and good, but nine touchdowns once the red zone. He just talked about the red zone and trying to continue to improve that. Can you just talk about his, whether it was his yardage or touchdowns and how you know he can translate more into the touchdowns? Yeah, and I think it involves everybody, really, and that's been a point of emphasis. Uh, you know, we work on red zones, our big day tomorrow. Friday is a big red zone day, so that becomes the, uh, when we practice tomorrow, that becomes uh, the number one priority. And so it's just about putting together a plan, better plan and better execution on Sundays, but it all goes hand in hand, so we'll continue to find ways to, to score once we get down into the red zone. Great. Um, Sean and I think 41 snaps uh, on, on Thursday, uh, obviously an increase as he's moving along with you guys. Um, 
is that just kind of a sign of where he is with the offense? And then, and then another question, um, how big was that touchdown throw to him? Just kind of huge, uh, huge, obviously to start fast, uh, the number of statistics out there on, on teams that score first in a game, your percentage of winning a football game. So we're aware of that, the importance of starting fast and, and, um, and getting him involved more in, in what we're doing. Uh, and th that was a big part of it was him feeling comfortable enough to be out there and be able to handle the, the volume that we have. And not, not so much the volume, because he could handle that, but also the possibility of checks at the line of scrimmage and knowing what to do when uh, Derek maybe has to make an audible uh, because of pressure at the line of scrimmage. But his comfort level uh, at being able to play uh, a full game, uh, obviously since he's been here, is much greater now. Uh, and, and we just felt like th that game uh, against Dallas was a game that, all right, he's ready to, to handle a much bigger role. And so let's get him involved and try to get him involved early. And it uh, worked out well for us. Is there any correlation between what he did and then opening things up for maybe Hunter and the running game and you know, on and on and on with the offense? Yeah, I think... You know, I would say anyone that has watched what we were trying to accomplish and working to accomplish as an offense when the season started with Henry Ruggs and the importance of, of drafting uh, Henry Ruggs to take the speed and take the top off so that we can get better boxes to run the football uh, is an important part of what we wanted to do. So when, when we lost Henry, obviously it became uh, important for us to try to go out and find somebody that may be able to take over that role and, and – and then looking and watching Deshaun and knowing people in Los Angeles, uh, we felt like there, here's a guy that will be able to fulfill that role for us. So uh, we're happy, obviously, that we have him. And again, uh, hopefully we'll continue to do what we've been doing here in, in terms of his, his role in taking the top off. Greg, for your team to get on a run and get into the playoffs, how important is it to get Brian Edwards a bigger part of the offense? You know, I think, again, there's uh, you look at the number of, of – skilled players that we have. It's important to get make sure that everyone's involved, and Brian's a big part of that. Uh, we think Brian's got a real bright future here in Las Vegas uh, as a young player, uh, but we think Kenyon Drake. How do we can involve Kenyon? How do we involve Marcus Mariota? How do we involve, uh, you know, Foster Moreau now? Uh, I think we've got to – I said we've talked about our skilled players. Uh, we think we're more difficult to defend when we spread the ball around, and, and Brian's a big part of that. So, uh Again, we go in every game looking at touches and making sure that everybody's involved in terms of the touches. But some guys, as we go in, uh, depending on the matchup that week and the and the scheme that we're playing, some guys may have more targets than others. Great. How how um, big is the chess match going to be between Derek and Jack Del Rio, considering their history and how well they know each other? Yeah, it's an interesting question, Paul. I know. Um, Certainly, you know, Jack being here is, is, is very familiar with Derek. Uh, I think the, the scheme has changed from what they were running. The terminology has changed. So I don't know, uh, other than just knowing Derek and the type of player he is, uh, is that an advantage? I, I don't know if that is or not. I think Derek's a much more ma mature player now. And uh, um, I think, again, it's just a totally different scheme than when Jack was here. And, and Derek... Uh, has seen, you know, that they're not running the same scheme defensively that they were running here in, or in Oakland when Jack was there. Jack's running a different scheme now. But um, does it help maybe a little bit to know one another? I, I, I guess maybe you could say that, but nothing that jumps out really uh, in that conversation I've had with Derek. It kind of goes both ways, I guess. Yeah. yeah. I would think he'd be, he'd be careful, you know, just, again, there's just, it's, he's a different player in a different scheme. And Jack's running a different scheme, so how much there is there? Seems like this year the offense has been very explosive. You know, putting up these thirty-point games, or it's, it's kind of struggled a little bit. When it comes to that, you know, finding that week-to-week -week consistency, consistency, what do you think the key is moving forward? Yeah, again, it starts the practice. It starts their preparation. It's the plan, putting together a better plan for them, and and making sure that uh, you know we're. we're depending on the scheme that we're playing against, that we're accentuating the strengths of our players uh, in that scheme. So, you know, I did do a better job of the game planning part of it and then certainly the preparation and uh, the practice and the, then again the, the execution on Sundays. But it, it all goes hand in hand. But just try to do a better job as a coaching staff of putting our players in a position to succeed each week. How, how important was the, was the win last week just to – you know, show the, the work that you're doing is, you know, paying off and results and just like kind of build that confidence back up. Yeah, I think every week's huge. And, um, 
No, yeah, and we, I know we talked about it a couple of weeks ago about that we don't like to place more importance on one game than another. They're all important when you only have 17 of them. Uh, but as you know, when you lose three in a row, I think the mindset of the team, you got to bring the, bring the players back up. How do we get, you know, and the best way to bring them back up is to win. So um, I, I think uh, the players, you know, believe in the system, they believe in the staff. Uh, that we'll get things turned around, and they believe in the process. And I think that's important is is sticking to the process and, and making sure that they understand that. It's about the process during the week. Results will come if we get the process right. And if we get back to maintain the winning habits uh, throughout the week uh, that it takes to win, whether it be in the preparation or our practice phase or nutrition, whatever it is, um, the scheming part of it as a, as a staff, we just got to continue to believe in the process and work to get a little bit better every day. That's good. All right. Thank you, guys. Yep. Nate, um, you've obviously uh, made a pretty quick transition to the NFL. Uh, has any of it surprised you um, how quickly it's kind of come together for you and, and the level that you've played at and maintained throughout the course of the season? Um, I wouldn't say surprised, but it's definitely, like you said, it's been a quick transition. I feel like um, anything you put your mind to, like if you just mentally transition along with the physical transition, then it should go you know, smooth. You're going to have hiccups and mess-ups here and there, but um, I'm just grateful that I could, you know, pr uh, produce for the team. Hey, for your uh, my cause, my cleats, you decided to go with uh, intellectual disabilities. Uh, mm -hmm. What does that cause mean to you? Why'd you choose and are you excited to wear those cleats? Um, so, uh, I just, you know, I got a soft, a soft spot, I guess, for mentally disabled people because um, uh, ever since I was, like, Five for like seven, eight years. My family, uh, we took care of this mentally disabled lady, and she grew to be like a sister to me. Um, so yeah, I, that's why I wanted to do that. Gus was just in here and kind of uh, lamenting, I guess, some of some of the big plays you guys gave up late against the Cowboys. Said that you had a clean performance till the fourth quarter. Uh, but what went wrong on some of those breakdowns, and what's the key to do uh, fixing those in the secondary going forward? Um, I think we just got to be locked in the whole entire game. Like, I think we've had a couple games where we've put out really good performances as a defense. And then um, that, that fourth quarter, we, we tend to uh, – well, not tend to, but we have a couple games, let it slip away and have big plays. But I just think that goes into focusing, like really like focusing and not letting fatigue get to you. So – Nate, this time last year, uh, you're winding up uh, your college football season. Mm -hmm. uh, you look at the NFL schedule, there's six more weeks left to play, which is a lot of football. Yeah. Did you hit a wall this year at all, or, or um, how are you doing with that part of it? Um, thank God I, I don't really think I hit a wall, but I, I just think it's all mental. Like, if I knew what I was coming into, you know, before I got here, I knew I was going to have to play 17 games, so I just tried to – do a good job of just mentally preparing every week and taking it week by week. That's kind of how I do it. Um, every week I'm trying to go one and zero and treat every game like it's my last game. So when you look back at these last twelve months between your season in college, uh, preparing for the scouting combine, all the workouts and uh, all that sort of thing, have you had a break yet? I mean, or um, not not really too much of a break. I had a little break between. When uh like pro day and then when I got had to go for the draft, but other than that, not really. So is that part of a mental just being able to kind of grind through all of that? Yeah, I, I guess so. Um, I just you know, I mean college you don't get too much breaks anyway, so um transition to the NFL just man you know grind grind grind. So like I said, it's all mental though. Did you guys need that win last week just just to get back like the confidence and th know that everything you're working on is, is working and going in the right direction? Yeah, I I think um I think we did. I I think it that's that's success cuz like like my teammates said earlier in the, uh or last week like we come to work every day with the same attitude. Win or lose um 
and we just come hard and work hard. But when you, you do want results as an organization, and when you get those results and you know that hard work's paying off, it gives you an extra boost and make you want to work a little bit harder. So I just think um, we can build off that and keep going. Nate, during training camp, the the uh, the play of the wide receivers was said to sort of help the secondary, which needed improvement. In the last few weeks that Deshaun's been here, yeah, has there been anything specific that that the secondary can feed off of to learn from a veteran receiver and defending every day at practice? Um, for sure. Like I see things every day, and. and not only Deshaun, I just think the whole core, including the the um, the the look squad, the practice squad, they give us great looks. I, I like going against a lot of those guys because they go hard and they they gym, like they they good players to me. I think they can go come in on the active roster and, and make plays for us. So not only him, Deshaun, but the whole the whole squad, even the starters to the look squad, give us a good look. So. Yeah, I think the last time we talked to you, you were still pretty new to playing Nickelback. How much mm-hmm. more comfortable do you feel in that role now? And what do you think has led to your, your good play in that role? Um, every week I just feel like I get to see more and more, and I think experience is the best teacher. So I'm um, just getting all those all these games of experience, and um, I just thank God I've been able to stay healthy. Uh, w- w- along with the, those two things, I think I've just been able to grow and I'm definitely uh, comfortable in, in that role. Now, you, always, you always hear that pass rush and coverage go hand in hand. Yep. What does that look like on the field, though, just to somebody that doesn't really understand what that means? Um, somebody really who, who, to somebody who doesn't understand what that means, I, I just feel like when you're getting a good rush, that affects the quarterback. So that causes you know, bad balls to come out. He might get hit throwing the ball. He's under pressure. He got to hurry up and throw it. Causes bad throws. It helps the secondary. As a secondary, when we when we on our A game and playing good and we made the quarterback hitch, then that gives time for the D, uh, I mean, not, I was about to say the defense, but the D line to, uh, you know, get back there and do what they do best. They've been doing a great job for us as DBs. If I, uh, if I'd have went higher in the draft, I'd have took them out to eat a long time ago. But I got saved up, so. But for sure, so like we, it's complimentary football. They help us, we help them. Nate, for you, your teammates have talked about you being a listener. You ask a lot of questions. Mm-hmm. You want to learn the game. How big of an impact has Casey made on your career? Uh, I think Casey's made a huge impact from day one. He's been open to anything I've asked, took me in like a little brother, and um, just anything I, I asked for on tips, he gives me that. But really, I see that in his play. Like I just try to, I just try to watch him and learn and, and pick up little things. And he's always open to you know telling me or giving me advice. So Casey's having such a big year, and he's such an established guy in this league. It seems like. A lot of times, at least outwardly, if they aren't even looking towards his side of the field. Does that come across on film, or do you feel like that? Do the rest of you guys feel like they're kind of trying to challenge you you and other guys instead of throwing at Casey? Um, I do think um, – my bad. I do think his good play and just his being, – him being a veteran and, and such a, a great quarterback in this league, and now he showed that you're, you're, you're in and you're out. Um, they haven't been really targeting him, him – as much as you would think a cornerback would get targeted every game. But um, I think they at least try one of us once or twice a game. But, yeah, not, they haven't been trying them um, as much as, you know, want the boundary corner or just the other corner in the game. So. Thank you, Nate. Thank you, Nate. Was uh, the game on Thursday for you? Just you got 41 snaps, uh, big increase from the previous two weeks when you're kind of getting acclimated. But to be able to, especially early on, contribute yeah. and then carry that through the rest of the game. Sure. I mean, I, I think it was big uh, just to set that game. You know, we 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 all went into that game knowing the expectations, knowing the world was going to be watching a pivotal game in our in our season, and uh, you know we had our backs against the wall. No one thought we could win that game, so. I think the energy we came out with and uh, 
you know, just throughout that whole game, the adversities, just the plays and how that kind of game, that course of the game went on. It was huge for us to come out of there. Jerry's road with a, with a W. He's been around uh, a while, so you kind of know there's certain games that just become a little bit bigger based on, especially after what had happened, the three-game losing streak. All right. You guys sense that? Like that, that was like a, a moment that you guys had to respond. Yeah, I, I think, um, you know, being in a position where, you know, you can only take advantage of one game at a time, knowing the, the past, like you said, previous three games, um, couldn't really worry about the three games we lost. We just had to go into that game knowing we had to be 1-0 that week. And uh, set us up with the best position we could to, you know, you know, start on start on that run as far as trying to make it into the playoffs. We know where we're at. You know, we're at the bottom of our division, but uh, with two teams in front of us, even and one team ahead of us, and we get a chance to go out and play all them teams again too. So we're just keeping that in the back of our mind. But uh, you know, we can't really look ahead. We got to worry about it this week, and uh, you know, we got a, a good team coming in here. It's been kind of you know hot the, the last few games as well. Sean, you've scored eight touchdowns, seven passing, one rushing against Washington with various schemes. Mm -hmm. It's one of the teams you've had the most success against. Yeah. Why is that? Shoot, uh, I mean, we're early on. I mean, my first few years in Philadelphia, obviously, they was a rival. And, uh, you know, every time I got a chance to, to play them, you know, I'm I, I just excited for any moments. Man, anytime I'm able to get on the field and play, I, I just look forward to you know, just doing some great things for my team. So, you know, saying that to say, obviously, played in that division, knowing how big them games get, and obviously playing for that team and then leaving. And, you know, the way I feel about the teams I leave that I once played for, I kind of always feel like I got to <laughs> make them pay extra harder because they had a chance to keep me and they didn't. So it's just, it's just personal reasons why I go out and just play how I play. Deshaun, to piggyback off that, uh, Rich, Derek, today Greg said, you know, it's going to take some games for you to get acclimated. Mm -hmm. Was it perfect timing that third game it happened to be against the Cowboys <laughs> in Jerry's world that yeah. you would show out in that game? Yeah, I, I think obviously uh, in my career, if you look back at my career, you know, some of the big games I've had against the Cowboys, <clears throat> that's another team that, you know, I kind of take serious or take personal as well too, just because being in that division and, you know, I never really kind of liked the Cowboys, just my personal opinion. But, uh you know, three games in, like you say, just getting the understanding of the offense down, pack a little more and just feeling comfortable and being out there, being able to just fly around and not think too much is, you know, something else too. I take credit in just coming in and really, you know, learning the offense. That's the biggest thing. I think in the NFL, these offenses can get very um, complex and it's a lot of stuff in the offense. So to re to realize that and come in at mid-season to be thrown in the fire is definitely tough, but you know, I just take it you know, credit for what I've been able to do, you know, stick my nose in there and just kind of get to it. Sean, you tweaked the calf injury this week. How are you feeling just overall physically? Yeah, I mean, it was just a spasm in my, my calf. Uh, I, don't, I don't think it's too serious. Hopefully, uh, you know, I can still be able to get out there this week. Uh, <clears throat> you know, but going throughout the week, um, just being smart with it and, you know, getting the treatment and getting, getting it ready to go. But, uh, yeah, last week playing 41 players, I can't remember the last time I played. Played that much, so just getting acclimated, getting it back down, and, and uh, getting getting it under my system. But uh, like I said, I don't, I don't think it'll be too big of an issue. But uh, we'll definitely be smart with it as well. Sean, you know, the more you do get acclimated and comfortable here, um, and I know you don't want to look too far ahead, but mm -hmm. is this a place that you'd like to stick around a little bit longer than than just this year? Yeah, man, I I, I made that uh you know an emphasis. I think one of the first interviews I did, you know, just saying you know I've been with four or five teams now in my career and. You know, just where I'm at in my career, being my 14th year, um, you know, I definitely hope this is my last stop. I don't want to continuously go to team to team and just kind of, you know, keep continuously learning new systems and all that stuff. So I think here is a good spot, a good place. Um, you know, what, what the Raiders have going on here with the organization, it's somewhere I, I look forward to, you know, finishing my career and, you know, just like I say, being a spark and helping out these younger guys here and just kind of letting them know, you know, what it takes to be a professional, how you can – you know, make a longevity out of this business. Have you been able to kind of get around and get a feel for the, the community here and this market? This yeah, time? not not yet. Um, obviously, being a California guy, always coming to, to Vegas to party, but uh, you know, I'm not here to party now. So just kind of really just been staying out the way. Uh, you know, when I'm off work, I just like to go home and just relax and, uh, you know, get off my feet. But, uh, you know, off season, I'm sure, you know, you can have a little more fun, you know, go, go hang out and, 
have some fun. But uh, yeah, right now my biggest focus is just, um, you know, focusing on our season and trying to finish strong to get this push. But I definitely look forward, like I said, off season getting to the community, um, you know, going to schools, uh, talking to young kids, and you know, just really showing my face in the community. I'm big on that. What have you done with Derek over the last few weeks to get that comfort level with each other? So when you get into the game, like you did in Dallas, that you can be targeted more. I mean, with, with two veterans, man, I, I think it's it's not hard, man. Uh, you know, with with him, what he's done in his career. You know, where he's at this year, man, he's been playing lights out football. And, uh, you know, implementing a guy like myself that's been able to understand offenses and schemes, I think it was easy for us to gel together. Uh, you know, he has an expectation and vice versa and myself as far as, you know, in a quarterback where I expect the ball. And, you know, for us, man, we see eye to eye. So I think it was a it was an easy gel and it was an easy, um, you know, situation to put us together. Sean went two-quarter, two I guess. Number one, what does 35 feel like? Number two. <laughs> Shit, it's only been one day. <laughs> Goddamn, <laughs> slow down. <laughs> Number two, when you're gliding down the sideline like that, and that's how Josh Jacobs described it, you were just gliding out there. What What's that like in your head? I mean, what are you thinking? What are you hearing? What is that vibe like when you're running down the field? Yeah, man, honestly, in the, in the, in the midst of it, man, you just just reacting, man. You know, you, you play, or myself, I've been playing this game so long, and, you know, I could just remember all the hard work I put in as a young kid, and now to be on this big time level, you know, you, you kind of don't get caught in the moment yet. You know, it's like if you stop and think about it and just get overwhelmed with it, it might be a little too much. So, I, you know, my whole career, I've just always been living in the moment and just trying to make the most out of every situation, opportunity. So, you know, for me right now, man, I still haven't really sat back and really looked like, dang, you know, I've been this type of player and I've been in the league this long. Like, you know, I kind of want to wait to, um, you know, maybe retired and kind of look back and flash back on it. But, like, in the midst of it, man, it's just a great feeling. You know, you work so hard to, you know, <clears throat> be in a position like that. So once you really are in that position, man, it just feels good. So just to know that you could go out there and still, you know, play this game at a high level and beat all these young dudes that's been watching me since they've been young kids <laughs> and still be able to do it, man, it's, it's definitely a great feeling. Sean, uh, just in your three weeks being acclimated, what's kind of your thoughts on the wide receiver room weapons around you primarily like Renfro and Brian and Zay. Yeah, man, them them dudes uh they got they got a lot of ball in them, man. They they definitely got a lot of upskill, uh, I mean upside. Um you know, good group of guys. They're they're all willing to learn, they're all humble, um but definitely work hard and they uh implement each other well. I think everybody, you know, from BA to to Hunter to Zay, even you know some of the young guys in there like, you know, they're definitely eager and hunger to to want to be great and uh continuously working. Sean, you talked about prior to coming here, Vegas was a party stop. <laughs> right. It's kind of odd yesterday, birthday. Birthday always falls at the football season. Man, but no. <laughs> just going home on your birthday, what would what, yeah. you do? Did you do anything after work to, to celebrate, or was it yeah, to work day? Yeah, and I actually had a – we had the weekend off too, so I kind of was able to, you know, go out and, um, you know, get some dinner. Didn't party, but – uh. You know, I had a dinner yesterday. Actually, uh, Marshawn came in town. We actually hooked up, you know, a good friend of mine, you know, since um, college. So, you know, just hooked up with him. I went to Tao, ate some food, um, you know, just relaxed, man. You know, I, I'm 35 now, you know, so the partying days, I mean, it, I, I'm not going to say they're over, but as far as right now, it's not it's not a big priority to me. So, like I said, yeah, just went to get some food, man, and just relaxed. Was able to sit back this weekend watching football and, you know, just, just hang out, man. You know, we so – we put so much time and effort into working, you know, so when you do get some days off, you just kind of want to sit up and chill. But you look up and it's like, damn, Monday here already. <laughs> what happened to Friday, Saturday, Sunday? And, you know, you're enjoying football and it's like, you're, you snap a finger right back to work. Is it odd now that Vegas is home and not a party? Yeah, I never really got a chance to really see the outside of Vegas. You know, every time I come to Vegas, it's always the strip. So to be able to be outskirts and, you know, seeing the city, Summerlin, you know, Henderson, it's, it's definitely a nice city, man. It's ongoing building, you know, nice house out here. So I'm, I'm definitely excited, you know, to, to see where the future holds from here. You mentioned all those guys have been watching you since uh, they were kids. Do, do you get that a lot when you come to a new team, like hear guys saying that? And how does that make you feel? Is that an honor? Or is that I feel a old. <laughs> make me feel old. But, no, nah, man, honestly, it's definitely an honor. And, uh, you know, I've, you know, some games this year I've been playing against dudes where it's like they're trying to shake my hand and congratulate me. Like, man, I've been watching you since a little kid. And I'm like, man, no, nah, we could say that to after the game. Like, I still got to I gotta <laughs> play against you and I'm about to whip your ass. Excuse my language. But, uh, you know, we could, we could talk about all that friendship shit after the, after the game. But, no, nah, it's cool, man. It's a good feeling, man. All right.
right, guys. Thank you. All right, I'll take it.